Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think we'll make a start. Apologies for being a few minutes late. Um, we had a few presentation issues, but I think we're there now. So we'll just wait for everybody to take a seat on the stage. Okay. So I think we'll make a start then. Um, thank you very much for attending this, uh, this session. My name is Katie Bird, and I'll be <coughs> moderating uh, the session this afternoon. The idea behind this panel is to explore the link between standards and smart cities. Um, we're lucky enough to have some great experts up here on the panel with us today who will be helping us out with this task. Um, we have Mr. Daniel Martinez, the mayor of Montevideo, Ms. Gao Sumei, uh, the executive secretary general of the China Electronics and Information Industry Alliance, and the heads of the three leading international standards organizations Mr. Franz Rijwick from the IEC, Mr. Sergio Mojica from ISO, and Mr. Chase Lee from ITU. So, as I mentioned, this panel is all about uh, standards and smart cities. So, on the one hand, we have uh, standards which contain guidelines or best practice or specifications to ensure that things work well, uh, safely, and efficiently. And on the other hand, we of course have our urban areas, our cities, who are facing many new and varied challenges today. Very varied, anything from uh, traffic, mobility or fluidity, to public transportation systems, to ensuring that citizens have access to clean water, or improving connectivity. So our job here today is to uh, explore how standards can support smart cities in facing some of these new challenges. So I'd like to thank all of our panelists for agreeing to be part of this conversation and to thank you all for, for joining us today. So thank you, thank you very much. So just to give you a few practical notes as we progress through the session, each of our speakers has a very short presentation um, and then we'll have a 15 minute question and answer session at the end. So some of you may know if you've attended other panels already during the day, we actually have a tool that the organizers have given us <coughs> to help out with that Q&A <coughs> session. And this is an app. Um, on the app itself, you can submit your questions. They're then visible to all of the participants and can be voted on. And that allows me to know in the question and answer session uh, which are the most popular questions. So if you have the app installed on your phone, you can go to the um, ask and vote part of the app, find our session on there, and then type away. So you can ask a question at any time during the session, but we'll ask them only at the end. And of course, don't panic if you don't have the app or you're not quite sure how it works. We can also do questions the old-fashioned way, and you can just put your hand up during the question and answer session, and we'll cover as many of those as we can. So just one final note before we get started. We will be presenting in a couple of different languages here on the stage today, so keep your headsets handy for the interpretation uh, if you'll need. Okay, so we uh, don't have so much time today, so without further ado, I shall hand over to our first speaker, uh, Mr. Franz Wiesrich, who is the uh, General Secretary and CEO of the IEC, the International Electrotechnical uh, Corporation. So I will hand over Franz. So thank you very much, Katie, for the introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy and honored to be here and see such a full audience here today. That's really great. And I hope we'll have a uh, good and uh, lively discussion and that we can contribute here as speakers a lot to your understanding why standards matter for smart cities. So power for cities is what I said. Cities, they need electricity for everything. And the IEC work provides the technical foundation for the millions of electrical and electronic systems and devices that are used in cities. And I think I'm going to, yes, no, hang on, okay, yes, good, next slide. But first of all, who knows the IEC, may I see a show of hands, yes, 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 okay, good. Good, but not everyone yet. So I will say a few words about IEC. The IEC is a global, not-for-profit, quasi-governmental organization that brings together 170 countries. 
representing 99% of the world population and 99% of the world electricity generation. We publish international standards that fully satisfy the World Trade Technical Barriers to Trade Agreement, WTO TBT. Most countries in the world accept the products that are built and tested according to IEC standards. The IEC provides a global platform, a knowledge platform, where some 20,000 experts, volunteers from all over the world cooperate and they develop the international standards that are needed uh, by the public and the private entities. International standards are voluntary. Only governments can make them mandatory. But they are voluntary. They are consensus-based technical documents that represent an agreed way of achieving the same outcome reliably, time and again. In over 200 technical committees, these experts agree on the technical specifications, the measurements, the rating methodologies that allow millions of electronic and electric devices and systems to work together safely and efficiently. These globally relevant international standards are then adopted in many countries around the world. And for example, close to 80% of the European standards are in fact IEC standards. The IEC also administers four conformity assessment systems whose members verify and certify that products fully qualify uh, and they fulfill the quality, the safety and the efficiency that the standards need to do. So, cities. Cities are giant systems with countless subsystems. No two cities are alike or need the same solutions, but all of them depend on electricity and hardware to move people and things around, to collect data and exchange information. It is impossible to build an efficient urban infrastructure without reliable energy access. No electricity simply means no smart city. And the IEC provides the majority of the international standards needed to safely interconnect and automate much of the city infrastructure that generates or uses the electricity and contains the electronics. They open the door to a larger choice of products and also facilitate long-term maintenance and repair. These benefits both the city and its citizens. Our work for the cities, they cover smart electrification and all forms of energy generation. If you think about the electrical and electronic infrastructure for transportation, which includes trains, light railways, trams, metro systems, electric and hydrogen buses, cars, e-scooters, bikes, cable cars, etc. Supporting infrastructure, which we cover, for example, in train and metro stations like lights, displays, uh, the turnstiles, the ticketing machines, the escalators, everything. And the majority of the electrical and electronic equipment that is used in airports, the at check-in, at luggage, the conveyor systems, the transport, the tracking, the runway lighting, the security, the access control. But also think about the vertical water management. And here in this pictogram you see several of those verticals. Water management, all the electronics and electrics, the pumps, the safes, the valves, the sensors, the control systems. It's all needed to have clean and recyclable water in a city. Without that, there is simply no hygiene. So, we also support with our standards the devices and systems that collect data, including data centers, computers, fiber optics, sensors, as well as security and cybersecurity. Home and building automation, household office supplies, but also everything in the healthcare sector, in hospitals, in doctors' uh, offices. Think about prevention and diagnosis and treatment. And then, of course, supermarkets, the freezers, the lights, the, lights, the scanners, everything. We contribute to ensuring the safety of every living being, the security of physical and virtual systems, and the management of resources and much more. And for all these reasons, 
every smart city project should include ISC standards and think about its purpose and its fulfillment there. To achieve smart cities, cooperation is a must and no longer optional. Why do we say that? Because we are here with three international uh, standardization organizations and we have recognized, the three of us, that we need to cooperate. And the IEC extensively cooperates with many different stakeholders and uh, standards organizations, including consortia and fora from around the world. Our aim is to bring on board know-how and expertise in a systems approach and to avoid duplication. And this is also the reason why we initiated the first World Smart City Forum in Singapore last week in partnership with ISO and ITU. So, IEC work helps to power cities. It contributes to 12 of the 17 sustainable development goals of the UN. And it helps to make the world a safer and more efficient place. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, your thoughts on how electricity is obviously very much a kind of central theme for smart cities and of course the standards that go along with that. So I'd now like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Gao Sumei, uh, the Executive Secretary General of China's Electronics and Information Industry Alliance. Uh 那么中国智慧城市呢，呃，随着这个中国城镇化的推进，呃，智慧城市呢，也在呃不断的在呃向前迈进啊。特别是在这个，嗯，特别是呃那个在国家呃国民经济十三五规划的这个提出的呃。创新协调绿色开放共享的发展理念呢，呃，对智慧城市呢，呃，更指明了一个发展的方向。同时呢，就是智慧城市呢，中国的智慧城市呢，更在呃稳步的向前推进。那么现在呢，中国智慧城市
。因此呢，就是中国的智慧城市呢，应该说现在全国各地是遍地开花。那么截止到二零一七年六月份的时候，呃，目前中国呢已经有六百个城市，呃。覆盖了百分之九十五的副省级城市和呃百分之七十六的地市级城市，那么他们呢都呃出台了很多投资的这个政策，呃投资的这个呃这个计划，那么总投资额呢达到了呃上万亿元，这是呃第二个特点。那么第第三个特点呢，就是呃中国智慧城市呢目前已经进入到一个理性呃发展的新阶段。为什么这么说呢？因为中国智慧城市发展，它实际上是分了三步走。那么第一步的时候呢，它应该说是一个起步阶段。那么在这个期间呢，主要是一些解决了一些个性，呃，就是呃单向的，就是专项的一些信息化、信息化的这个建设。那么第二个阶段呢，呃，叫探索阶段。那么这块呢，主要是更加重视了这个顶层设计和这个呃。就是基础设施的建设。那么目前呢，现在我们正从第二阶段向第三个阶段在迈进，而且呢是呃由这个呃更加注重了这个智慧城市的这个嗯资源共享和智慧呃和这个智慧城市的一些资源的整合，还有信息的共享。那么也就是说，我们第三步呢已经迈进了呃新型城新型城镇呃智慧城市。那么到目前为止呢？就是呃，中国的智慧城市规模呢，已经超过了六万亿，而且呢，未来的五年呢，中国城市的呃建设的发展呢，将以百分之三十以上的增速发展。到二零一零年的时候，中国智慧城市的呃市场规模呢，将达到十八万亿左右。也就是说，呃，中国的智慧城市目前呢，已经进入了一个快速发展的一个阶段，市场规模呢，也在逐步的放呃逐步扩大。那么，这是呃中国智慧城市的一个三个特点。呃，那么我我再简要介一下，介绍一下中国智慧城市的未来的趋势。呃，因为中国城市的未来的趋势，那我们的理解呢，它将来是一个爆发性的增长。为什么这么说呢？首先呢，是那个呃，十九大提出了两个百年的两个百年的那个发展目标。那么这个发展目标的提出呢，也为中国智慧城市呢创造了一个良好的发展的空间。那么因此上呢，第一个趋势呢，就是呃更加注重这个标准体制的建设。中国智慧城市的这个中国智慧城市标准化总体组呢，在二零一四年一月份成立了。那么陆续推上推动了三十四项这个标准，呃智慧城市标准的这个嗯立项和研究工作。二零一七年又发表了四项，呃又发布了四个标准。同时呢，在二零一六年的时候呢，中国呢呃就已经。发布了新型智慧城城市的评价标准，那么这些标准的出台呢，都将有力的推动呃中国智慧城市的健康和规范以及可持续的发展。那么第二个特点呢，就是更加注重这个网络的安全。中国呢是一个网络大国，也是人口就是呃网呃网民人数也是最多的一个国家。那么它的应用，网络的应用呢，渗透到国民经济的各个领域。那么网络呃安全呢，对于中国的这个经济安全和政治安全都是至关重要的。所以呢，就是在中国呢，呃，特别是那个习主席啊，已经提出了要从网络大国变成一个网络强国。那么这样子呢，就是中央呢出台了很多的政策来支撑的这个整个城市呃中国智慧城市网络安全的这个建设。这是第二个，第三个特点呢，就是中国智慧城市的发展呢，它的带动效。将进一步的显现。那么一方面呢，就是它会带动的整个国家的数字经济在快速的增长，特别是像这个现在的信息服务业，它的那个整个的应用的规模以及包括它的结构呢，都会呃进一步的提升。那么第二个呢，就是它会带动新型呃战略性新兴产业，也就是新技术产业在快速的发展。那么呃。它的发展趋势呢，将会呈现快、高、优、活这么这个态势。一个是规模在不断的扩大，呃，水平在不限不断的提升，同时呢，它的效益呢也在不断的呃这个增长。那么未来的产业发展呢，也将更加的活跃。呃，另外呢，也是智能制造这块也是未来的趋呃会带动智能制造以及工业互联网的这个快速的呃发展。那么这是中国智慧城市的未来趋势的三个方面。那么也就是说，中国中国的智慧城市的未来的市场呢，将来是一个爆发性的增长。所以呢，今天也希望在座的各个企业家呢，将来到参与到中国的智慧城市的建设。那么呃，中国电子信息行业联合联合会呢，也会将更加关注中国的智慧城市的发展，同时呢，也会为各个企业以及为我们的企业、为我们的政府呢，也会搭建更多的平台，呃。
那个来。一目前呢，中国电子信息行业联合会的会员单位呢，骨干企业已经有这个四百多家哈、啊，呃，同时呢，我们还有二级的这个行业分会。那么这些分会呢，呃，总共加起来，我们的会员单位现在是上万家。所以呢，我们也非常的呃欢迎呃这个就是各国的企业家参与中国呃城市建设，同时呢，也欢迎大家来到中国电子信息行业联合会，我们帮着各个企业来做一些呃愿意帮着你们做一些政策的对接和一些市场的对接啊，谢谢大家。Okay, thank you very much for sharing some of China's experiences with smart cities and for underlining the importance of collaboration amongst uh, industry groups and then also standards organizations. Um, we'll now move on to our third speaker of the panel, uh, Mr. Sergio Mujica, the Secretary General of ISO, the International Organization for Standardization. Thank you, Katie. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here and to have the opportunity to share a few ideas with, with you. Um, before I start my presentation, and three concepts and that I would like to stay with you to set the scene for, for the presentation. First, by the year 2050, over 65% of the world population will live in cities, according to the UN. Uh, and that means that what we do here affects billions of people. So what we do here matters. So we better do it right. Second, the concept of smart cities does not belong to highly developed cities or countries. It's not about London. It's not about Paris. It's not even about Barcelona. It, it is not about robotics or high tech. It's a vision. It's a way to travel. It's a manner to do things. And just a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure to celebrate the World Standards Day in Zimbabwe. And I was really amazed to see the level of commitment and enthusiasm everybody has there to make the city of Harare a smart city. And the third key concept is nobody can make a smart city on his own. So ISO is very happy to support the construction of a smart city. But we know that there is a bigger picture here. And uh, coordination is essential. The good news is that we're not starting from scratch. 20 years ago, nobody could have imagined that uh, we have emergency services navigate along using the fastest route, or waste collectors that know exactly when recycled bins are full, or free Wi-Fi everywhere. So there is a lot of progress out there. We need to be very proud of that. But that is happening right now, as we speak. But of course, there are a lot of challenges. And some of them you can see on the screen. And that means that there is a golden opportunity for all of us to address these challenges and to contribute to improve life of billions of people. And of course, we believe that standards are an indispensable element to address those challenges in an efficient and successful manner. And why? Because standards provide a common language where we can exchange information, we can identify best practices, and we can also monitor progress, which is really important. Second, standards can help us to have an efficient management of resources and also stimulate innovation, because we can build on common grounds. How can ISO help? Well, the same survey as France. Does anyone know ISO? ISO. Yeah? All right. Good. Well, I'm convinced that ISO can help a lot by first providing an overall framework to define what smart city means for me and how to get there. We need to provide responses but respecting the identity and the reality of each country and each city. And I think the flagship here is our ISO 37101, which sets out the basic requirement for sustainable development in communities, and also the strategy to get there. 
but we also have developed a number of standards to address some specific areas which are very important to make our cities smart. You can see the specific areas there on the screen. So these standards represent international consensus and best practices and a concrete pathway to achieve our sustainable development goals. But it's not only what we do, international standards, it's also how we do it, the manner we develop these standards. And in ISO, we create standards first in a transparent manner. We provide full information about the development of the standards in all the various steps for that process of development. Second, the standards we develop are consensus-based. We do not impose standards. We co-create standards with our stakeholders. And finally, the third few uh, few, uh, the first uh, characteristic of standards is that we uh, apply an inclusive approach. So it's very important for us to respect the diversity of our stakeholders, such as regulators, politicians, industry, citizens, etc. Now a couple of words about the future. How do we see the future? First, if we want to create smart cities, we need to make sure that we apply smart collaboration. So we need to combine our talents for a better performance. That requires first a vision, a vision to understand that the bigger picture is sometimes more important than the individual pieces. And second, a lot of generosity. Because uh, when I collaborate with others, when I coordinate my actions with others, and I lose part of my autonomy, but with a view to getting a better result. So as I like to say, um, everybody likes coordination, but nobody likes being coordinated. And that is the challenge we have in front of us. It's a challenge that we need to address by having this vision and by applying a lot of generosity. Second. In this coordination, we need to address specifically first our sister organizations, ITU and IEC. We have a couple of good news there. We signed a letter of intent about cooperation of smart cities, precisely in the last General Assembly of ISO in Berlin. And also the president of the three organizations sent a letter to all members asking them to coordinate at national level. Sometimes it's even more challenging, even more difficult to have that kind of coordination at national level. And we also need to include others, apart from IC and ITU, other standard development organizations. And that is why we have organized a World Smart City Forum tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, so we make sure that we can engage with those other uh, standard development organizations. And the other element, the third element about the future, is that we need to be bold and open for change. In the last General Assembly in September, 162 ISO members signed the Berlin Declaration under the slogan, under the motto, open-minded, open for change. We cannot succeed in our efforts to build smart cities if we do business as usual. We need to go further and to do more. Especially if we believe that uh, what we do matters and affects, and we have also the opportunity to improve the quality of life of billions of people. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sergio, for sharing how important the work is that we're all doing in this room today, um, and for highlighting some of the tools that, in fact, already exist. So we'll now move uh, on to our fourth speaker for the panel, uh, Mr. Daniel uh, Martinez, the mayor of Montevideo in uh, Uruguay. So hopefully we should be good. Bueno, buenas tardes. Un placer estar acá. 
me toca hablar desde el área de lo que somos los gobiernos locales en este tema que está revolucionando, creo que positivamente, el mundo, abriendo un sinnúmero de oportunidades. Eh, quiero decir también que el tema del TEPANEL eh, lo considero muy importante y bueno, para alguien que viene de la ingeniería industrial y que le, te, le tocó empezar a trabajar de estudiante en una refinería de petróleo, no lo es ajeno el tema de las normas y los estándares, o sea que son fundamentales para hacer las cosas bien, con excelencia, pudiendo medir y comparar. Sabiendo que aparte la aplicación de normas te permite planificar y tener visualización en el futuro de, de qué forma uno viene avanzando en los, en los lineamientos estratégicos, que es lo que tenemos que tener como ciudades. Ya por lo pronto implica un desafío. Muchas veces las ciudades, o quienes están al mando de las ciudades, eh, piensan en el corto plazo y los estándares y, la, y la, la, la implementación de estándares nos dan justamente esa capacidad o ese fundamental aditivo de poder pensar en el largo plazo, sabiendo que la transformación de nuestras ciudades normalmente no abarca en un periodo de la duración del, bueno, del gobierno de un político, sino que tenemos que tener la cabeza y la capacidad de pensar de manera estratégica en función de lo que los ciudadanos necesitan y no de los intereses políticos más individuales y a veces, por qué no, más mezquinos. Por lo tanto, eh, abrazamos y aplaudimos esta iniciativa, miramos con mucho interés lo, lo que se viene realizando, las pruebas piloto y esos 100 indicadores que, que, bueno, que se están empezando a desarrollar, porque son eso, herramientas de trabajo para trabajar en base a objetivos de corto, mediano, pero sobre todo de largo plazo. En el medio de la exposición, la luz no me deja ver nada para adelante, así que se supone que hay un compañero que va a estar haciendo pasar pantallas, no van a estar vinculadas en lo que diga, simplemente si alguno quiere mirarlas, van a tener una serie de información de lo que estamos haciendo en la ciudad de Montevideo, pero creo que simplemente es a modo de que, es más, si alguno después se lo quiere entrar en la página para estudiarlo con tranquilidad, este, lo puede hacer, pero, pero es a modo indicativo y dar información, eh, yo voy a ir uh, avanzando por otros carriles. Creo que lo fundamental de todas formas, es que la, las, las normas tienen que servir para algo, justamente. En la medida que son ele elementos de medición y de evaluación que permiten evaluar, controlar, ver eh, eh, distanciamiento, acercamiento de objetivos, tener comparación con lo que se está haciendo en otros lados, no son neutrales, tienen que estar en función de objetivos. Por eso para, para nosotros es fundamental, y en Montevideo lo que primero que hicimos es ¿para qué queremos una ciudad inteligente? Es la primera pregunta que nos quisimos hacer, es más... Recuerdo que fue una conversación cuando yo había sido electo y Ada Colau ya estaba, ya una semana o dos semanas que había la, la alcaldesa de, de Barcelona, nuestra anfitriona, la querida Ada Colau, tuvimos una reunión y, y bueno, un poco discutíamos sobre para qué sirven las ciudades inteligentes y el debate es si solo es un tema de tecnología o es un tema de que debe servir como una herramienta para la transformación. Por eso... Nosotros somos lo que creemos que primero hay que marcar los objetivos. Desarrollo económico, sustentabilidad, integración, inclusión y igualdad de oportunidades y participación y control ciudadano deben ser los objetivos para los cuales esta herramienta debe ser funcional. Por supuesto que permite desarrollo económico, trabajo de empresas privadas, no somos para nada lejanos de, de esto, es más... Ustedes van a poder ver acá, si alguno quiere visitarnos, un hermoso stand de una pequeña ciudad que se llama Montevideo, capital del Uruguay, con solo 1.320.000 habitantes, pero con el 42% de los uruguayos que vive en su capital, eh, donde estamos en eh, la capital, la ciudad de Montevideo, junto con un grupo de 8 o 9 empresas del sector de software que están colaborando con nosotros a nivel del trabajo de ciudades inteligentes. No estamos, no es, pero lo que debemos decir es, no es solo un problema de tecnología, el Internet de, la cosa, de las cosas es muy importante y es la herramienta, pero hay que ponerla en función de objetivos. Por eso nosotros hemos venido buscando desarrollar políticas en las cuales desarrollamos un centro de gestión de movilidad con impactantes resultados que han permitido no solo mejorar los tiempos de desplazamiento en la ciudad, sino bajar en aquellos lugares donde funciona la semaforización inteligente un 67% de los accidentes. Desarrollamos, eh, estamos desarrollando junto con empresas privadas y, y emprendedores y pequeñas startups sistemas de control, por ejemplo, de medición del llenado de contenedores, medición de ruido en diferentes puntos de la ciudad, calidad de aire, calidad de agua, 
agua. Desarrollamos bueno, tecnológicamente muchos factores junto con el sector privado, el sector de la, de la academia, pero eso es, como decimos nosotros, una parte del, del, del trabajo, una parte de lo que queremos, necesitamos hacer para lograr los objetivos, que es satisfacción de los ciudadanos, pero también está la otra pata. ¿De qué forma logramos en este mundo de moronía líquida, como lo llamó algún sociólogo a nivel internacional, en donde parece que todo se, la banalidad y la poca importancia y la distancia de los gobernantes fuera el paradigma de los nuevos tiempos? Necesitamos crear y utilizar las ciudades inteligentes y las herramientas de las ciudades inteligentes como herramientas de cercanía al ciudadano, de transparencia para que los ciudadanos sepan lo que estamos haciendo. haciendo que controlen en qué gastamos los dineros públicos, pero a su vez también de forma de poder criticar y aportar ideas y tener sobre todo información a la hora de poder evaluarnos y tener espíritu crítico para tener los elementos para juzgar a, en, a, a quienes los ciudadanos depositaron su voto. Por eso hemos desarrollado un montón de APPs e instrumentos a través de los diferentes sistemas de las redes y sistemas de smart, smartphones, de forma de que los ciudadanos puedan tener en una base, un sistema de Open Data, acceso a absolutamente toda la información y el trabajo que, es que se genera en la Intendencia. Desde un seguimiento de las obras que se han votado a nivel y que se han decidido hacer a nivel del, del, de, la, de la municipalidad, de la Intendencia, como se llama en Montevideo, en Uruguay, un control de lo que es, eh, cuánto se ha gastado, qué se viene haciendo, qué nivel de avance de obra, qué nivel de cumplimiento, qué nivel de satisfacción o de impacto en la ciudadanía está teniendo, utilizar también la, 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 la tecnología para informarle a los vecinos de cada lugar donde una obra de infraestructura se está haciendo, qué alternativas tienen de movilidad o de, o de, de posición de residuos sólidos urbanos, eh, soluciones que acerquen la gestión y la transparencia, la gestión de la ciudad y la transparencia en el control de los ciudadanos al, digamos, a la vida cotidiana. Generar también APPs que permitan solución a problemas cotidianos, desde saber cuánto va a demorar un bus, qué alternativas tengo para ir de un punto a otro, si me conviene esperar el siguiente porque el que viene está muy lleno, etcétera, etcétera. O soluciones que en definitiva nos permitan, eh, bueno, eh, que el ciudadano se sienta partícipe y protagonista de lo que es la gestión en esta época de modernidad líquida, donde, donde vuelvo a decir, muchas veces pareciera que los políticos fuéramos más personajes de la pantalla chica o de un medio electrónico y no seres de carne y hueso. Yo creo que tenemos el desafío de hacer que la tecnología no sea simplemente algo sin alma y frío, sino que la tecnología también sirva para acercar la gestión pública al ciudadano, que el ciudadano se sienta partícipe a través de la transparencia, controlando, estando informando y controlando, criticando o aplaudiendo o aportando ideas, pero siendo protagonista. Si no, en definitiva, aquello que escribió en su momento Orwell, saqué el libro de 1978, va a dejar de ser simplemente un libro de ficción para hacer tal vez una triste realidad. Tenemos la oportunidad de utilizar la tecnología para solucionar los problemas, pero también para darle protagonismo a los ciudadanos. Las normas ISO justamente nos, nos permiten tener las herramientas como para poder controlar que estos objetivos estratégicos que como políticos, pero también como comprometidos con un futuro de democracia cada vez más profunda y participativa tenemos, realmente estas normas contribuyan a ese objetivo a largo plazo que en definitiva va en beneficio de todos los habitantes de nuestras ciudades. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll now move on to our fifth and final uh, speaker of the day, uh, Mr. Chaser Lee from uh, ITU. And yes, thank you very much for all of you keeping so wonderfully to time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lee from ITU. Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, being here with you, uh, taking some of the uh, advantages from our a distinguished colleagues who presented all these standard works, specifically from the international standard organizational point of view. Whatever you have any uh, suggestions or uh, any questions or are curious, please go to our website. There are tons of information. Uh, let me try to show this. What is ITU? Uh, ITU is actually one of the UN specialized agency as a uh, responsible for the ICT developments. So the government is our major uh, memberships, 193 memberships, same, same with the UN. And also, we have a, 
uh, multi-stakeholder models. So uh, more than 700 industries, they are our members, mostly operators, ICT uh, industries, they are our members as well. Also, we have uh, uh, academia members, uh, 150 academic members, uh, they are joining of this, our platforms to develop our standard. Uh, one of the easy ways to find out what standard we, uh, you use, uh, so basically all your smartphones use of our standard, whatever, whether this is 3G or 4G, even coming 5G, they have to use of our standard. Uh, your uh, video, uh, video uh, codex, uh, video streams also use of our standard as well. Anyhow, so IT has a responsible for the ICT developments. Uh, our uh, broadband uh, connectivity is uh, also our responsibility area. Uh, IT engaged with this IoT and the uh, smart city space uh, since year 2008. We have a quite long uh, history of these studies. And then we conclude, our members conclude at year 2015, we can merge together with this IoT and the smart city. So we make a one uh, expert group called IoT and the smart cities. With that experience, let me challenge you. When you think about these smart cities, what kind of image do you have? Maybe both of four different photos. Many of the case, you may think about upper part could be nice enough to say that's a smart cities. But below part, why not smart cities? Because smart cities doesn't mean of this modernized. Smart city is a reflect of our cities being smart. In general, city has been built and continuously changed based on the, their physical locations having of this environmental impact. They are heavily dependent on this local history and their culture. And the citizens' behavior always changed. This is a very, very important element for designing of our cities. Except of that, there are tons of reasons why I have to city continuously changed, which means none of the cities are the same. That might be a big challenge subject, how, why we have to utilize standard for cities. Specifically, international standard organizations has a big challenges. We are a little bit wondering about applying of this international standard make all cities look to like the same. Can you imagine after the smart cities, all cities have the uh, same nature of these franchise restaurants, coffee shops, all this. They should be disaster. I don't believe this is uh, one of the features of the smart cities. While we are applying of our technologies, most important part is we have to keep their own city, own history, their culture, their own specific things. How we can have that? That is an uh, important subject while we bring over our standard to the communities, to the cities, to the markets. Uh, there are many other things, but as a uh, quickly look at smart cities would be consist like uh, devices, systems, and they uh, drive the data and the platforms, service and application operations. There are many of standard organizations already engaged. So it could be, as our uh, colleague said, Collaboration is most important part, but we also encourage competition as well because this each city has a different natures. But most one of the important part is whether we have a competing standard or not. Harmonization is important because this is what need of this city uh, governance. In this sense, I'm also happy to we organize together with this IACIS ITU World Smart City Forums which will start tomorrow. And one more information from us is ITU, we have uh, organized the so-called United for Smart Sustainable Cities. This is a new UN initiatives collaborating with the 16 UN organizations. We developed a smart city KPIs 
those KPIs apply through this UFSC. This is open space, so anyone have an interest in this joining of these uh, initiatives, I welcome you. So can you find of this uh, some of a uh, contacting point? So those groups have uh, also three working groups uh, forming up to address how we can deliver this more uh, resilient and uh, sustainable smart cities to the world. So this is a collaboration activity with the UN Habitat as well. So we try to collect all inputs and all collected opinions and bring to the UN, uh, UN agendas. I think that would be the, uh, my major presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, I think we'll now move on to the question and answer uh, session. So thank you very much for sticking to time and even saving us time. This is much appreciated. I hope you've all been submitting questions in the app. I think I have a... Aha, uh -huh. so I have some questions here. So we have a, a top question, uh, which I think will uh, be directed to uh, some of our standards organizations, and particularly IEC. When it is affirmed that no electricity, no smart cities, does this mean that smart city just relates to technology? So I would like to direct that to anyone on the panel who's interested in responding. Uh, Franz, perhaps you'd like to start off, and then maybe we can hear from uh, Sergio, you, and Chaseb, and anyone else who'd like to add. Yes, thank you. So yes, of course, as I said, it is um, a condition to have electricity and it is a condition to have connectivity to make things smart. It also means that, of course, um, um, without electricity, it simply cannot be done. On the other hand, um, electricity is not all of a smart city. Then that's why we are sitting here also together and giving the same message to everyone that we need to collaborate because there are a lot of standards in the infrastructure that may be electrical, which are, say, more on our part of the, the spectrum. But I, equally, there is the connectivity part more in the ITU space. There is the mechanical, there is the chemical part more in the ISO part, uh, space. And you name it, we need to, with those converging technologies, to make sure that we collaborate and together solve that complex puzzle of that very complex system of all those verticals that we would like to optimize uh, going forward. So um, being smart means a lot. Uh, electricity is a sm very important one. As I said, the condition sine qua non without it, it doesn't work. But we have to do this holistically and we have to design it from the requirements that the city managers need to um, put on the table so that we can definitely uh, create the standards and ensure that the standards work together in the various uh, verticals that need to uh, communicate. Okay. And specifically also the whole data structure and the control structure is very essential there. Okay, I would like to you. stop with there. Anybody else want to yeah. add? Uh, let, me, let me do that. Um, when talking of these smart cities as a compared with a normal city, why we call of this smart city? Uh, smart needs something. Uh, data from unknown areas. We have to understand the situation of this uh, some place which happen in the city or communities. But this data coming from our devices, our systems. To produce all this data, definitely we need electricity. So electricity, what I want to say, this is an infrastructure of infrastructure because connectivity is the clue to get of this smart, being smart of this operation of the cities and communities. As Francis said, important part is that city, smart cities is more than technologies. But until collecting of this data, everything is, looks like a technology oriented. But after collecting of data, how to process, how to understand of this data, how to react this collected data, that's a human being's uh, responsibility. How this is a city governance, their policies, their regulations, facilitate of this, uh, those application of such data. So smart cities, more than a technology, definitely. Okay. 
And uh, I think I mentioned at uh, the opening of my presentation that uh, the concept smart city does not belong to highly developed countries or highly developed uh, cities. Um, and I celebrated the Smart Cities Day together with the uh, Harare City in Zimbabwe. And they are very enthusiastic and committed about smart cities. So technology can help, certainly, but it's way much bigger and broader than technology. For example, management. Good management is indispensable. Or energy, road safety, uh, responsible water consumption. So those are some of the key concepts that we need to embrace in order to have a smart city. OK, thank you very much. Um, another question that's been asked slightly more practical level, um, how actually are the organizations um, collaborating? Um, so how are ISO, IEC, and ITUT collaborating? So um, would anyone like to take that one? We have a great example of that, in fact, tomorrow. But um, I shall, does anyone want to? Uh, I think you mentioned okay. it in your presentation yeah. very briefly. Let me open. So. Uh, I think so our colleagues will follow. The standard is the language. Stand, the result of the standard is a written text. That should be enough to implement. So collaboration of, among the standard organization is to identify our language get together. So this is a, understanding is very important. What, when you call those smart city or smart, the same sense or div, how much different the knowing of this, uh, understanding of this language is very important. So this uh, World Smart City Forum, we have a first announcement of this collocated, collaborated, uh, collected terms of reference of these terminologies on smart cities. That is uh, one of uh, collaboration result. Even definitely, as France said, we can show of this our standards, how those standards is working together. Many of these infrastructure elements, we need, a collabor uh, we need some collected, proper collected of standards. It's really helpful for building of these stand uh, smart cities. OK, thank you very much. Um, and another perhaps uh, more practical question as well. We did a little uh, poll earlier at the beginning of the session of how many of you actually were aware of the three standards organizations that are here on the stage today, ISO, IEC, and ITU. Uh, it might be interesting as well just to explain a little bit more detail for people. If anyone in the audience was perhaps interested to be involved in the development of a standard, you know, is that possible and how would it work? Uh, perhaps. Uh, Sergio and France, uh, one of you could perhaps e explain a little bit more detail how it is, in fact. Uh, you mentioned both briefly um, getting different stakeholders involved in the conversation, bringing people around the table. Perhaps you could expand a little bit on that. Yes, I can. And, and I think um, for uh, ISO and IEC who have what we call joint directives, that means that our processes are very much alike. We work very much in the same way. We ask in F from every country one organization, it's the national standards body in ISO or the, called the national committee in IEC, to gather around their tables all the stakeholders involved in the process, all the stakeholders that can contribute. That is, of course, the government in many ways. That is, of course, academia. It's, of course, the private sector, but also the public sector in various shapes and forms. And we need them around the table because, as mentioned by Sergio and by me, we are creating in our organizations consensus-based standards, standards that are, the, uh, say, the consensus of the best practices, codified knowledge. And every one of you, if you want to contribute to that, there is an organization in your country with, where, that you can contact. And that is our member in, for our two organizations in your country. And that member can uh, lead you so that you can become active in a technical committee where the problem that you are worried about is being discussed. And you can help um, to bring your solutions to the international arena where it can be discussed with all the countries so that we get the best out of all the experiences and all the, say, um, best practices that are being done by all of these countries here and that you can see here at the uh, expo. And I think that is the great benefit of international standards, that you can uh, bring that to the table with everyone, and it can be discussed and decided upon and can be put into a standard so that everyone can benefit from it. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Um, I think we have uh, time for perhaps one more question. Uh, one minute left. Um, so perhaps a question. Oh, a question. A question. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Quiero hacerle una pregunta al alcalde, porque desarrollar estándares e implementar estándares son procesos relativamente largos y que muchas veces no coinciden con los tiempos y con las urgencias políticas de cargos que son electos. ¿Cómo lo ha hecho usted para compatibilizar ambos conceptos? Bueno, pavada de pregunta, como decimos nosotros. Eh, no, implica tener eh, una mentalidad, un concepto. O sea, yo estoy convencido que cuando uno está en política no debe estar en beneficio de un proyecto personal, sino eh, tiene el honor de ser electo por los ciudadanos para cumplir una meta. Por lo tanto, lo que hay que hacer es establecer mecanismos que logren generar eh, políticas de largo plazo, eh, que es lo que en definitiva permite estos cambios. No existe la implementación de un sistema de codificación del conocimiento, como dijo muy bien el, el amigo, que es en definitiva lo que es una, una, una norma, codificar el conocimiento y las mejores prácticas para la solución de los problemas, no, es imposible implementarlo si no existe una... uno planifica como para que generar una cultura dentro de la organización que trascienda un periodo de gestión. Igual puede venir el que viene y te cambia todo. <risa> Dice, lo que se hizo hasta ahora no me gustó, eh, porque también eh, reconozcamos que cuando uno más estandarice, cuando uno tenga más sistemas de control y de comparación, benchmarking, lo que sea, más evaluado está, más controlado está. Puede haber, yo soy de los que quiero que me controlen. <risa> me parece democrático un sistema en el cual la, el, los políticos y quienes tienen una responsabilidad sean sistemáticamente controlados por los ciudadanos. Por eso hice tanta insistencia en el aspecto de las ciudades inteligentes volcado hacia la participación, el control y la información del ciudadano. Eh, garantía, eh, discúlpame, no la tengo. Creo que es un, un compromiso ético que debe tomar cada gobernante. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm afraid we are indeed out of time, so we'll have to conclude and call it a day there. Um, I'd like to thank our, our panelists very much uh, again for joining us and for sharing their insights and experiences up here. And thank you very much uh, for coming along, for listening and, and for taking part and for asking all of those questions at the end. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.